I've done some pretty long tumbles before, but never this long. I'm really excited to open these, but first we need to go back to the beginning. At the time you're watching this, it'll be one year in the past. Today's January 1st, 2021, and you won't see this until at least January 1st, 2022. So I've always wondered what would happen if you put rocks in a barrel with some grit and water and just left them alone for a really long time. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. And I've chosen to use carnelians. These are from Morocco and bahia agates from Brazil. And I chose these rocks because they're pretty nicely rounded rocks. Uh, they're nodules, they're not crushed rocks like a lot of rocks you tumble are. Um, so they're gonna have a fighting chance of coming out nice at the end of this because they're, they're, they don't need a lot of grinding. Um, I tried to match up the rocks in both of them as closely as I can. So I've got the same number of carnelians for each barrel, the same number of bahia agates. Uh, the sizes are similar, so I tried to match up, you know, as I went through, I, I paired them up and I tried to make sure they all matched up. Uh, some of these have broken edges, but it's a nice smooth break. Over here I've got some broken edges. So each barrel will have almost the same stuff in it. I'm going to put the same amount of water. I'm going to use a little more water than normal just because I'm afraid that it's just going to dry out over the, the course of a year. Um, as rot dust accumulates in there, uh, it tends to make the slurry thicker and thicker, and I don't want it to get too thick. I'm going to put the same number of, uh, or same amount of grit in each of them. I'm going to use four tablespoons in each barrel. Uh, the difference, though, is going to be this one's going to have silicon carbide grit, and this is going to have aluminum oxide grit. Uh, the size of the grit over here will be 6090, and the stuff over here will be 80 grit. So those are approximately the same size grits. Um, silicon carbide grit, as it breaks down, as the rocks roll and it cr gets cr crushed in between the rocks, um, it's very brittle and it breaks into little pieces. And those little pieces are sharp because uh, they're broken. So silicon carbide is really good for grinding rock and wearing rock away. Um, so it's good usually in the first part of a tumble. So I use that uh, in the first couple stages of most of my tumbles. Aluminum oxide, on the other hand, when it gets worn down, it wears down and the pieces get smaller and smaller and smaller, but kind of rounded. Um, so they don't break, they wear down. Uh, that makes it good for polishing, and I usually use it at the end. The, the polish that I use in my tumblers is aluminum oxide, and uh, the 500 grit I use is aluminum oxide because I'm kind of getting ready for the polish stage. So the only difference will be silicon carbide here, aluminum oxide here, rocks almost the same, same amount of water, same amount of grit. And so we're gonna see what happens. So let's get these in the barrel and put them on the tumbler. Now I just have to find something to do while I wait. I suppose before I open these up, I ought to make some predictions about what's going on inside. Uh, to be honest, I have no idea, but I'm going to take a couple guesses and just kind of tell you what's going on in my head. Before I do that, though, I want to show you the bottoms. Uh, both of them are kind of indented, kind of sucked in, probably about an inch. Uh, both look about the same. Uh, my barrels don't usually do that. Uh, but I didn't put anything different in as far as like I didn't put hot water in if I would have put hot water in I could see that happening, but I put cold tap water like I usually do uh, These both started out around 1640 grams and they both lost four grams over the course of the year um, So I don't know where that that extra weight went, but uh, maybe, maybe it's rubber worn off the outside of the barrel or something I don't really know uh, so um, Before I started this I would have said with 
in a week, probably the grits are gonna be broken down to the point where they're not doing any major grinding anymore. That's why I change the grit after a week in the tumbler usually, uh, because it's just broken down and it's pretty ineffective at that point. Uh, however, in listening to these, they sound different. Listen to this one, this is the silicon carbide. It sounds like there's a lot of liquid and a few little rocks in there. This one, the aluminum oxide one, sounds completely different. That sounds like a lot of rocks. So I think these got worn down more, um, even though I haven't changed the grit. I mean, I really haven't opened these up at all. So I'm thinking there's gonna be smaller rocks in here and bigger rocks in here just based on the sound. I would not have said that before I took these off the tumbler. And these really have been on the tumbler. I haven't touched them in a year. I haven't taken them off and opened up the lids and peeked at all. They've been just rolling for a whole year. So um, the other difference is, as I said before, aluminum oxide is better at polishing. I would expect these to be shinier. If one's shinier than the other, I'd bet on this one. Uh, although silicon carbide broken down into really, really small pieces, uh, maybe that'll polish also. So I really don't know what to expect there. So uh, anyhow, let's uh, go open them up and see what's inside. Is it weird that I'm nervous right now? It's only been a year. Can't get the lid off. It's sucked right on there. There we go. That is really, really thick. Holy cow. Well, they're not gone. This is the silicon carbide. So let me get that rinsed off. There's some stuck in there. Wow. That is some thick, thick grit. Or slurry, I should say. All right, this is the aluminum oxide barrel. I will be showing you these closer in a little bit and I'm gonna weigh the rocks and see how much they change and all kinds of stuff, but here goes. Still thick, I don't know if it's quite as thick as the other one. Well, I got them all washed off and dried, and uh, look who showed up. Nancy came down from upstairs to see what I was doing down here. Well, a couple reasons. You know, I'm an old science teacher, so I like a good experiment. And then secondly, I've been hearing about these rocks for like a whole year, so even I was impatient to find out what they look like today, so. And I couldn't be happier. This is just so exciting. It turned out, started out as a little stunt and uh, turned out really cool. Really good demonstration of the difference between silicon carbide and aluminum oxide. Uh, so, I don't know if you can tell, but these piles of rocks are smaller than these piles of rocks. Uh, these lost about 27% of their volume by weight, and these only lost about 7%. Uh, these didn't shine up, and these got very shiny, so big, big difference. Yeah, the, the shine is just clearly different, you know, it just, these are definitely got a nice glare. These are very dull looking. Pretty, but dull. Yeah, yeah, kind of like me. <laughs> yep. Anywho, uh, these are uh, these are the carnelians up here, and I didn't understand this about this type of carnelian, but uh, I just got done tumbling some by my regular methods, and the carnelian, the orange part, is just around the outside. It's just a thin layer, and then it's all white quartz on the inside. So these are all I just tumbled all the orange right off of. So this used to be orange like those. Yep. Um, so just tumbled all that off of there. Uh, these are all full of pits. Those got smoothed out. So that's why I use this in the first stage and then the aluminum oxide later on the polishing stage. Right. Um, these are the Bahia agates. Oh, I wanted to show you one other one. This one is all hollow inside. I've got a, just a drill bit here. And this, you can just move it all around in there. That's all, all completely hollow. It goes in, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so. And uh, and it's big. I can move it all around. So that that's all. It was a pain in the butt. I had to keep filling this with water, dumping it out, filling it, and dumping it. But uh, got it all clean. Yeah, that is weird. 
This one's really neat. This has little eyes all over it. Just yeah, um, that one caught my attention right away when I walked down. You got eyes and stripes. It's just a just a cool rock. What more could you want? <laughs> I don't know. Except shine like those. Yeah, well that. This one's really cool too. It's got some nice bands on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyhow, these turned out really really interesting. So you tumbled them for a year. I, I heard you doing some math, math calculations. Tell me a little bit about that. So I figured out they could, if, if the tumbler barrel was rolling like along the ground for as long as it rolled in there, it would go 4,984 miles. And so then I got on a map and I'm trying to figure out what's that far away. Um, Hawaii was too close. It's about 500 miles too close. Um, Thomas from 99 Rock Hounding, I was chatting back and forth with him and he was helping me out and he figured out that Timbuktu is almost exactly 4,984 miles from Alpena, Michigan. So, uh, you know, it can't roll across the water, but if it could, um, that's how far the barrel would have rolled. As the crow flies. Yes. Um, so as the barrel flies, anyhow, uh, it went, uh, it would go that far. So did a lot of rolling to get here. So I don't think I'm going to trade in my old methods for this. Uh, but this was a very fun little experiment. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, uh, if you're new here, I put together a playlist of some of my favorites, so go check those out and I'll see you over there.